Now you might be wondering why we're sitting on my veranda. It's to show you that everybody can be a beekeeper, even if you are only living in an apartment in the city. I'm a victim of my own success because we had a fish tank hive that we created for to be an observation hive. And the jolly thing went so well that they've exploded. And anyway, the observation hive thing sort of moved on. We had a feed on the internet and everybody watched that and survived the bloody lockdowns and all the rest of the madness. But the girls have moved on. They've covered up the cameras with honey and wax and stuff. So we thought, well, we'll reinvent them and you get to come along. So it wasn't that so long ago and a bloke thought to himself, maybe he can make an observation hive, make a top bar observation hive out of a fish tank. And there was much naysaying here at the Bush Bee bloody research centre. So I was not one to be beaten. So I made myself a top bar beehive out of a fish tank, no less. And what's more, put it on my wife's veranda. So, and even better than all of those stories, I'm still here to tell the tale, which is pretty fascinating. But now it's come to a moment in time when the wife said, this is ridiculous. You can't be harvesting honey, making a mess on my veranda. So I've talked her into letting me use her old flow hive. So we're going to do a fish tank cutout and repurpose them. So here we go. Let's see what trouble we can get into. What's might even get a Barbie cover now too. <laughs> well, I've got a Barbie that this size. Let's see if we can just get this off. We'll try not to upset everybody too much. Here's our bit of insulation. Now for the big reveal. Oh my goodness, girls, what have you done? You have created my, my, myself a problem. Have a look at that, that's some serious honey. Whew. Golly gosh, John DeCoe. I think they've gone a little bit awry somehow. Anyway, we're here to rescue them, so what? Here comes the next excitement. <laughs> you gotta love the ingenuity of the little ladies. They've plugged up this hole. There was a bit of a hole here with my rough lid that I made and I've chopped that full of propolis, so that's pretty groovy, I tell you what. Normally you don't get to see a big lump like that all together, so <laughs> that's amazing. Gah, my smoker's not being very cooperative. He's playing hard to get. Yeah, now we've got to try and get the lid off, I guess. Struth. I guess you could guess that we haven't been here for a little while. <laughs> Yeah, they've filled up pretty quick. I mean, I wasn't that long ago when I was here, so. <laughs> uh, hopefully we can get the lid off. This is only just meant to be sitting here. Professionally designed fish tank beehive here. I reckon I'm even going to get the lid off. Maybe. Ta-da! Look at that! Now I've got a serving tray. <laughs> Come on, you stupid smoker, honestly. <laughs> It's our fancy attempt at some early um, bee frames. Yeah, well, where do we start? I think we'll start at this end. What do you reckon? We'll try not to smash anything. That would be good. I'm tipping the fact that it's running that way. It's not going to lift up with our little frames, I don't think. That's if the frames lift at all anyway. Hopefully we won't smash anything. We probably will smash something. I hope it's just not the fish tank though. How the hell are we going to... Oh, I guess we'll get it off of here once it's got not so heavy. Goodness gracious, ladies, what have you done? <laughs> that is not quite what I had in mind. Goodness me, John. We might need some hot water to clean up our mess after we've done this. Oh, the honey looks nice. Hey, what do you reckon? Do you reckon we, we, could, we could make some natural fish tank mead out of this, I reckon? What do you think? That'd be cool. Get some juniper berries. Yummy. Look at that, but that's not quite, look, they went the wrong way. <laughs> They're supposed to go that way. They went the wrong way. They're supposed to go that way with the frames of them. Just decided to go the wrong way, of course. Oh man. Wow, they have been busy. We have to feed some of this back to them as well, I think. Come on, you stupid thing. This is not what I need, the smoker not to work when we're on the veranda. Oh, God damn it. What did you put in it? It's just got some gum leaves in it, but they were quite good, but I think they've nearly run their race. I didn't think I was gonna need too much, but it's looking like we might need some more. Maybe I'll go and get some pine needles before I make a real mess. That looks a little bit better. So hopefully we'll get a bit more smoke, get a bit of smoke, get the girls. We don't want the girls up this end when we cut this honey off. 
I thought I'd utilise me lid and put me blooming fabulous top bars that didn't really work <laughs> in me lid. That'll give the girl something to do for a minute. You can go down there and scavenge that. I wonder if it ever goes the right way, John. It doesn't look promising here. <laughs> Man, they've been busy. They have had a good time up here. Oh, you can see the honey's changing colours as we're going through the season. Different gum trees flowering. Sorry, girls. You're going to be all right, though. We'll get you organised. Goodness me. They were going the right way not so long ago. <laughs> mm. Aren't they incredible things, bees, how they can store all this food up for themselves? It's amazing. I'm just going to go the other way somewhere here, surely. <laughs> I don't know how big the brood box is, but they've got a heck of a lot of honey up here. Let's see if I can make sure they just aren't here. <laughs> right, here we go. Oh, what a sticky mess, girls. I don't think my paint scraper is long enough. <laughs> anyway, it's not completely crucial, this bit. Just try not to make too much more mess than we're already going to have. Just start digging, I think. We'll give them some of this honey back because it's, it's sort of early, well, late autumn here at the minute. So we don't want them to get too hungry with all this hard work. But uh, it's no good where we are. Where did you be foraging? Maybe I shouldn't bother carding the bees all around the countryside. I should just leave them on my veranda. They do pretty good. <laughs> imagine that. Imagine that. Had your wife comes home and I've got a freaking hundred bee boxes along the veranda, all foraging away. Gosh. I think that might definitely be divorce material. <laughs> That'd be way worse than the screwdriver thieving, I think. <laughs> oh, I don't know. How are we going to get this out of here without making too much mess? I was just thinking before I get any sillier, I think I'm going to go and get a bucket of water because I can see here this is going to get very, very sticky and very, very messy. That might be a bit more respectable. Come on, keep burning, you crazy thing. I said that water might help me a little bit. Got to chase the girls back off the honey now. <laughs> I don't think there's any smoke coming out of that smoke now. Yeah, there is, a little bit. It's just you guy left you in charge of keeping it alight. How am I going to get that out of there without getting completely sticky? I'm not, am I? Because that's just gone to shit there. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Once we get started, we'll be right, hopefully. Yeah. I wonder if that's how they started making glue. <laughs> I doubt it. Mm, it's not even a corner to start with. It's just a big mess. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Sound. Oh, it's like the honey poop. <laughs> Sweeter than poop, though. Oh. Shit, I think I'm making a mess here. Oh. Was this your idea? Was this your idea? Tell you what. Man, we didn't even plan all of this madness. It just sort of happens. I'm going to take this and hopefully take a sheet. Oh, well, I suppose it doesn't matter now. There's not much point in trying to stay unsticky, is there? <laughs> if I take a piece here that I can actually get started. Because the interesting is, you can see there's fairly light honey here, which is the white blossoming gum trees we have. Then there's, they've had a quite a good run on some red gum. Well, it wasn't actually red gum, but the mallies that flower that have got like more red tinge to it. And the interesting thing is the honey all tastes different too. So, I mean, you'd see if you go on the website, we've got all the different colours and flavours. And that's something you probably don't realise when you go to the supermarket, that you're really just buying, a, in the best case scenario, it's a mixture of actual honey. That would be a good, a good thing. But when you, buy, when you buy from a small time beekeeper who's keeping his honey separate, you get to taste all the different flavours of the flowers that the bees were working. And they don't like it when you put your hand in their honey pot and they sting you. did we do down here? I think we take, sat the tank on the wood so it had a bit of breathing space, didn't we? 
I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I know there was many a naysayer that said this wouldn't work. So if you were one of the people in the comments that said a fish tank cannot become a beehive, think again, brother. Ultimately, it might not be very practical, but I think I could say that's successful. Somewhere in here is the camera that we were doing the live feed with. I don't know, it's buried in here somewhere, so hopefully we can get it out. Oh, shit. Yep. Uh-oh. I got half of it. <laughs> I'll see if I can get the mount out so it's a complete thing to put on eBay. Slightly used honey camera. Well, maybe it could be something, it could be a famous prop. Isn't that what happens with the, with the like, uh, props from the movie? They're worth a fortune. Well, I think we've finally found the brood nest. So this is the fun part. This is why we made those frames. So here we go. I reckon I've gonna just, I've got a few bee stings. My hands are going a bit tingly. <laughs> I'm gonna take the honey off the top and we just wanna keep the brood frames, like the brood nest itself on the frames that we've made. Cause you don't wanna have too much honey above that. As you can see, once you start disturbing the honey, it runs and sticks everywhere and all the ladies get stuck together. So the best approach is to keep the honey in one department and the brood in the other department and then let, let the ladies work it all back out and put themselves back together in a nice sensible order because you can see they've got the honey in their nice little cells and it's all nice and safe there and they can pop a cell open and lick the little bit out that they want get into a big sticky mess like this and the ladies will drown in their own hard work and that's the last thing we want that would be a negative result so we'll just have a look if we can make a bit more mess get a bit more honey in our pots find one of our cool new cutout frames. Hell, oh. ah, so far so good. <laughs> I might just sit that here for a second, figure out what I'm doing. I think we've still got a little bit more honey here to take off and a bit off the top. And then at least they've got a nice little opening for us. So we should be right. They do not look impressed to see us though, which is a fair cop. I think the fridge bee eyes are probably more practical. Except for the fact that it's very awkward to manage Definitely a successful thing for them to live in. <laughs> I mean, heck, I've cut them out of lounge chairs and stuff, so I figure anything's possible. Okay, okay with the stinging. Golly gosh. Ow! <laughs> I'm starting to get a fat hand. I haven't swollen up in years. I think it's supposed to be good for arthritis, but I think I might be creating arthritis at the minute. <laughs> cut down the edge. Now, wish you could feel the warmth real you like when you get to the actually where they've got the babies how warm it is it's incredible that's what you want a piece without too much honey so here's our cool frames that we've made that have got the wire on one side rather than actually trying to sit it on the actual b frame wire so if you go back an episode you'll be able to see us creating these one of our long time supporters diane from wa sent this idea through she found this in an old beekeeper's shed called Murray, Murray, what was his name? Murray somebody, anyway, Murray, Murray the beekeeper from WA had this bloody great idea and we thought it was such a great idea, we better share it with the world. So here we are. Yes, 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 I know, it's all very exciting, sort of. <laughs> sort of exciting, they said. It's more excitement than I'd anticipated. <laughs> it's just a bit of honey here on the edge. That we want to get rid of. I don't think there's anything important on that lip, which is good. Yeah. Oh, shit, there's some more crap on the veranda. I'm going to be so popular. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm going to be in the good books after this project. There's only so much gracelessness the wife will offer. <laughs> Hopefully this isn't the last episode ever. <laughs> Next episode will be brought to you from a caravan out the back. <laughs> So at the bottom of the honey, there's all this nice pollen that they've stored up. So that's their bee bread that they store up as well. Honey is basically their carbohydrates and the pollen is basically their meat and potatoes. So they're pretty clever how they make it all happen. And generally when they're trying to store the pollen, they'll mix it together with a bit of pollen, a bit of syrup and a bit of honey. And 
pack it in the jolly frames so they can eat it up later on. Because of course in their natural environment there's a fairly long winter so they're hence why they stir up all this food so is that they can actually have something to eat while the winter's wintering. <laughs> That's not very good English, is it? I would suggest you don't do this on your wife's veranda. Perhaps, perhaps just put the flow hive on your veranda before you put the, no, don't go from the fish tank to the flow hive, just put the flow hive on your veranda and just that'll be doing enough. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, just because I'm old, I'm gonna put it on top of this box. <laughs> the modern flow hives you buy have nice legs, but anyway, we can't have everything. <laughs> Oh, shit! Look out! <laughs> well, they've come a long way since this old one, haven't they? We've had this one for a while. righty -o. Stick this on here. So the little girls don't fall off. We'll just put our rubber band on here just to give it a little bit more stability so the little ladies don't fall off. We'll just pop this in our hive for a minute so they can just chill out. Might shake some girls in there, I reckon. That'll work. If I don't get too many stings. <laughs> I'm starting to get a bit tentative. Oh, come on, let go, you bugger. No, that'll be right. Oh well, it'll be right. <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of different options, but anyway, this seems to work. I like this idea of these wired frames. That's a cool idea. Otherwise, it's real fun. Quite, can be quite, ex, quite an exercise in insanity doing a cutout when you're trying to get them to sit on the frame. It'd be good to come back after they've settled in and see how they organize themselves. But ultimately, we'll rotate these frames out anyway. At least they didn't break. <laughs> Sometimes they let go pretty bad. Sit that in there and let the little ladies figure it out in a minute. I was hoping they wouldn't have too much brood because it's the wrong, it's the sort of slower time of year here in Oz because we're sort of getting towards the end of autumn so they start calming down so I thought this would be a good opportunity because it's a really bit messed up when you do a cutout and there's like thousands of frames of brood to try and move around, so it could be a success. But we've still got a few frames to go, yep, we've got another I don't know, five layers. So hopefully there's a little bit more, but it's actually looking pretty good. safely say this is a fishy mess <laughs> or a sticky mess my goodness gracious I'm hoping that the flow hive idea is a little less messy and a little less controversial but you know what you'll have to tune into the next episode and see the flow hive installation part if we happen to have an ant infestation do you reckon the wife will believe me that it wasn't my fault <laughs> oh, I'm sure when she agreed to this sort of kind of when she got home and it had already been done is that sort of belated agreement i don't know anyway hopefully this is a much more successful approach to beekeeping on a veranda the fish tank's been very successful as far as the bees are concerned a little bit less successful as far as humans are concerned but anyway all in all i think that's a success just pull the old fish tank out the way a little bit oh, it's still actually quite heavy believe it or not <laughs> How are we going to get this sticky mess down the stairs without making it, getting ourselves divorced? Good luck with that, MJ. Oh, oh, okay, my fingers are already swollen up enough. <laughs> I'm just going to put a temporary lid on here to give the girls somewhere to feel a bit safe until they all settle down. And then, next week, 
we're going to figure out how to make the flow hive look like it belongs here. Some bloke better find a mop down the hardware store, I think, to clean this veranda before he goes to jail. Or at least to his own bee box in the backyard. <laughs> anyway, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed our fish tank extravaganza. Don't forget to like, click, subscribe and all that crazy shit you do out there on the internet. Hell, strip over to the shop and perhaps buy a jar of honey from my wife just in case and make me feel like, make her feel better about the fact that you're viewing. Good on you dudes. <laughs>